Persinia. A distress signal is sent from the surface, a small colony called Evergreen. You soon realized something was going on beneath the surface, something big is about to happen. You no longer could stand by and watch, the time for action is now. Humanity has been given a second chance to fix what was wrong, do not waste it, and show the galaxy why you are called Lancer. Hello viewers and welcome to a new episode of Trash Talk on Lancer, no room for a wallflower edition, where I talk stuff about mech. In this episode, let's introduce two of the remaining alt frames, Inkidu and Gangese Mark 1, World Killer. But before I do any of that, I would like to address one issue. I know Inkidu and Gangese Mark 1 are basically made for maximum indiscriminate destruction, so I also know that some of you are probably going to throw in some war crime jokes around. To that I say, no, please don't actually post that here in the comment section, or anywhere else really. I don't think I need to remind you that we are still living in a world where war crime is still very much a thing and people are still suffering from it. Of course, I can't exactly do much if you do make those unpleasant jokes except being disappointed, but I'm going to be fucking disappointed if you do so. So please, don't do that, and make the world a bit better. Anyway, let's talk about Enkidu. Enkidu was a secretly designed experimental TBK frame made for maximum aggression, its neurological interfacing caused the pilots to lose themselves in the raw power of the frame, forcing them to continue greater and greater acts of violence until either the pilot or the frame fell apart. Any survivors would need extensive reconditioning, augmentation, and drugs just to continue. Deployed in limited number against the few remaining Egregorian hives, the final goal of Enkidu wasn't to ensure the total annihilation of the Egregorian, but to use the battlefield as a field test before deploying them against Thurcom revolutionaries and dissidents. However, that never happened, what few remaining prototypes were buried with the history of the crisis, and the code base was eventually modified and used by modern Harrison Armory for the Tokugawa frame. As for its name, the story first started with Gilgamesh, the king of Uruk, oppressing his people. In response, the goddess Aruru created Enkidu, who is definitely not a pretty boy and more like a beastie boy that's probably the worst fucking pun I have unleashed so far. However, Enkidu was like, just staying in the wood as a beast with no direction because Aruru apparently didn't fucking tell him where Uruk is, until Shamsit, a sacred prostitute, presumably fucked the knowledge of human speech into him. Epic of Gilgamesh. Now with teacher tag finally learning where Gilgamesh was, Enkidu told him to 1v1 him and they did, it was probably a very cool anime battle, and then they became friends. However, Enkidu was depressed for living at suburban Uruk and missed his old wildlife, so Gilgamesh proposed to him that they should kill Humbaba, some evil guardian of a forest or something, who upon seeing Enkidu is like the fuck you are supposed to kill Gilgamesh and then they both defeated it. Ishtar found a cold-blooded murder rather hot and asked Gilgamesh to become her husband, Gilgamesh put her down in the most polite way he could think of. And then Ishtar unleashed the bull of heaven on them, which they both defeated because of course. The gods were like okay this is getting out of hand and found the off switch to Enkidu, making him very dead. Gilgamesh was of course saddened by this, and now seek to find immortality so he may never fear death. Will Gilgamesh ever succeed in his quest for immortality? Find out in the next episode of Epic of Gilgamesh. Anyway, looking at its stat, Enkidu is a big boy with one armor, high health, and high repair cap. It has a decent evasion but it's kinda slow. Its sensor range, tech attack, and base systems point is nothing to speak of, but it has a decent E-defense. It also has a rather high heat cap. As for its traits, it has a staggering four of them. First, Primal Fury, is the definitive trait for Enkidu. When Enkidu ends its turn in Danger Zone, you unleash Beast Mode. Actually fuck that here's a better reference. Upon ending its turn in Danger Zone, you unleash your inner dinosaur and go fucking apeshit. I know what I just said shut the fuck up. Everything about this trait revolves around the plasma talons, which can only be used when in danger zone. It has decent damage, AP, reliable too, making it one of the only weapons that has AP reliable all the time, and on top of that it has threat 3. As a special reaction, keyword, special reaction, anyone that walks right into the threat when Enkidu is in berserker mode must be attacked with the plasma talon, must, because this works against allies too, and anyone that got hit will get immobilized until the end of their next turn. Not only that, while this special reaction can only be used once per turn, it can be used any number of times per round, meaning if the entire enemy decided to charge at you one by one, you can slap them all one by one. Also, 
this is a special reaction, which doesn't count against the maximum number of reactions per turn, meaning you can stack other reactions with it, like overwatch, prepared, brace, and whatever you can think of. Just think of it as Gorgon's double reactions per turn trait, except Enkija basically has a special reaction specifically to murder anyone that got close to it. This ape shit state ends at the start of its turn, or if Enkidu exits danger zone somehow. Second, all fours, when in danger zone, Enkija cannot make ranged or tech attack but has 6 base speed. Third, brute strength, Enkiju has plus 1 accuracy to hull checks and saves. And fourth, blood sense, Enkiju always know if a character is at or below half their maximum health but not the exact number. To simply put it, Enkiju has no fucking chill, to the point that a blackbeard would go Stop it! Get some help! It is completely nuts, and follows the Gorgon's school of defense by going nobody can hurt its allies if everyone is dead. You definitely do not want Enkija to stand right besides the rest of the team, or just have them not move at all for the sake of their own safety. Also, due to this enormous power, the Enkiju only has two weapon mounts, two flex. As for its core power, Enkiju can perform bifurcate by unlocking its limit restriction zero. Upon activation as a protocol, Enkiju gains the bifurcate full action, and can only use it when in danger zone. Basically, if a nearby character, allied or hostile, has 7 or less health, only one structure left, and doesn't have immunity to damage, they fucking die. It doesn't matter what is in the way, they will die. Armor or resistance, nope they die. 50 over shield, nope they die. A priest just makes you unable to attack them. On top of that, after killing a target this way, your action cost is fully refunded, and you can boost as a free action, meaning you could chain bifurcate across multiple weakened enemies, ripping all of them apart. However, if the target doesn't fit the requirement, you just gently massage them and dealt one kinetic damage to them. If you didn't murder anyone with it somehow, the core power cost is refunded at the end of the scene. I don't think I need to tell you how brutally effective this core power is at mulching fragile enemies apart, hell, this core power basically fully synergizes with blood sense, and with some memorization of the NPC health, you can basically just murder them quickly and brutally, which is definitely the whole theme of the Enkiju. Now, let's talk about the final alt frame of the book, Gangies, Mark 1, World Killer. Gangies Mark 1 was not only the very first model of Gangies, but also the very first chassis frame deployed onto a battlefield. Compared to the Mark 2, it was somehow an even more brutal weapon, crudely made to fulfill its purpose. Buried all across Hercinia, they were a grim reminder of the brutality of war that has occurred here, and may one day haunt the planet yet again. Looking at its stats, Gangi's Mark 1 is yet another big boy with 3 armor this time, along with a rather low health and decent repair cap. Its evasion and speed are kinda low, and so are its sensor range, tech attack, and base systems points, but it does have a decent E defense and a rather high heat cap. As for its traits, it has 3 of them. First, insulated, makes it immune to burn. Second, TBK munitions, makes Gangi's Mark 1 attack to ignore resistance to burn or heat. This is a big deal because this means nothing can resist the heat from Gangi's Mark 1, and there's a lot of enemies that have damage resistance providing systems, and now they are all dead. And finally, weak computer, Gangi's Mark 1 has plus 1 difficulty to all systems checks and saves, presumably from not updating its OS for the past 500 years. To put it shortly, Gangi's Mark 1 likes fire, a lot. As for its weapon mounts, it has 3, 2 main and 1 heavy. Onto its core passive, Gangi's Mark 1 can use its Juggernaut Reactor for Furiosa, which when in danger zone, Gangi's Mark 1 is now on so much fire, it gains soft cover, and anyone within burst 1 cannot take any reaction. As for its core power, Genghis Mark 1 can use Juggernaut Reactor for a pleasure to burn. Upon activation as a protocol, Genghis Mark 1 is now on even more fire, and Furiosa now affects character in burst 2 radius. Also, you now ignore difficult terrain because you just melt through them from sheer anger. If you overheat when the core power is activated, you release a blast of heat that melts everything around you. Characters other than you in Furiosa zone take 1d6 AP energy damage and must pass a hull save or get immobilized in the molten terrain until the end of their next turn, the area will also become a difficult terrain for the rest of the scene. To put it shortly, don't stick close to Gangi's Mark 1 unless you want to get melted. Anyone piloting a Gangi's Mark 1 however should always stick close to the enemy, especially those that like reactions to shut them down completely and then burn them.
As a conclusion, both of these mechs are quite a beast at close range, and honestly, they are also kinda an active danger to their own allies if they stand too close, one is better about it than the other though. Nonetheless, they are also fantastic mechs with very interesting themes to play around. As alt frames, both can be unlocked as a side grade to their base form, Tokugawa for Enkidu, and Gangis for, well, Gangis Mark 1. Obviously, they are also made to use the weapons and systems from the same license well, or at least well enough. Anyway, with everything done, I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some coffee. links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.